Home Assistant users. If you gave your spouse the Home Assistant app and told them to create an automation, could they do it by themselves? I'm gonna ask my wife to create an automation. All right, let's see if she can automate starting from here. Hello, internet. He is interrupting my dinner. Here's what you have to do. Mm. I just need you to create an automation to uh, turn on the porch light at in the evening time. So I click this thing. Sure. This is create automation. Yeah. I'm assuming we're creating a new automation. Yep. Oh, so the trigger would be yeah, so when the sun sets. Yeah, sure, when the sun sets. Well, that's what you told me. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to skip that. Why? Um, because this is optional. Okay, cool. <clears throat> then do mm, lights. Turn on. Good, good. I'm going to go with device. Sweet, so right, LMNOP, porch light. Nice. Oh, you're doing it. You made it much farther than I thought you would. I didn't think you'd get there. Uh, do you think I'm illiterate? Um, I, I can, you're illiterate. I can read instructions. I save. Title. The thing Michael made me do. Oh my God, I've been super impressed. You know, I don't know to be, I don't know if I should be proud of myself or offended. I just... You should feel good. If on a scale of 1 to 10, how hard was that? With 10 being very easy and 1 being very difficult. This is a very weird scale. Because it... Okay, 10. Very easy? Sure. Nice. Okay, cool. That actually went way better than I thought. But what if I told you that it can be even better? Imagine with me. There's a slider and powerful flexibility is on one side and user friendliness is on the other. Now you have to make a choice. The more flexible and powerful you make a feature, the user experience becomes more complex. If you choose to make the user experience simple, then the feature can't handle as much. You can't have both. For example, if we compare Google Home to Home Assistant, my wife would find Google Home way easier to use than Home Assistant. But then when I compare Home Assistant to Node-RED, people familiar with Home Assistant would find it easier than Node-RED. This scales up and up and up and up. But this is what I wanna know. Is there an exception to this rule? If I add AI to this scale, does it change the paradigm? Can we actually have both? And I'm no Thanos, but there's a balance that must be achieved. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. So let's assume that AI does make it easier. What would that cost be? And I'm not talking about financial cost, though that can be involved. I'm talking about complexity and time cost. What other thing becomes harder or takes longer because AI got involved? For the equation to stay balanced, something somewhere must become more complicated. Or does it? In any case, this leads to the final question, is that trade-off worth it? Here's a story that you're gonna probably find interesting. Amazon serves people worldwide. You already know this, both consumers and businesses. There are so many customers, it means that there are a lot of problems. Different geographies have different rules for buying and selling, different products, deals, and other nuances. Like it's, it's quite complex. And then when you add in complexities with distribution, problem will happen and it will not be easy to solve. If you add in, let's say, mandates or new protocols or initiatives that gets introduced, then you can imagine that there's a long vertical ladder of decisions that trickle up and down and like a really weird game of telephone, you can probably guess that things get lost in translation. Sometimes issues are loud and easy to spot and other times they're just a mere whisper. Point is something will go wrong. To help Amazonians discover defects, we have a data aggregation application that listens to billions of data points from all over to make it possible for Amazonians to discover those problems. Now, this is getting redundant, but here's the problem with that problem. The tool is hard as hell to use. Oh my God. It's so complicated, not even the developers that built it know how to use it. <laughs> the tool is so powerful and flexible that it requires a tremendous learning curve to use. And that's just the nature of it, right? With more power and flexibility comes very poor user experience. So how do you fix something like that? Let's bring up that complexity line again. If AI could cut this line in half and then handle all the hard stuff, then that leaves you with all of the easy stuff. 
This is that exception to the rule we need for Home Assistant. Follow me on one more tangent. This is gonna be important. Have you ever looked at some AI features that companies come out with and wondered to yourself, damn, that's pretty lame. Yeah, here's my take on that. AI is just an intelligent automation and an automation is simply a set of actions that can run on your behalf. I find that people really love automations that one, lower cognitive load, reduce complexity, and three, solve meaningful problems. Now this is an order of least to most impactful. Most companies come up with AI that are trying to lower cognitive load, but that bucket is really subjective and cerebral. I may have an easy time writing emails, for example, while you might not. I may find it more tedious to read through a blog post written by AI than writing it myself. I'm not saying that this AI tool or use case is useless. I'm simply saying that it's the cheapest form of using AI. The more expensive and impactful forms of AI use cases is when they're reducing complexities or outright solving problems. So I say all of that to say this, right? What does all of that mean for Home Assistant? This is for the Home Assistant team if you're listening. I don't know what you're working on, but having an AI assistant, I'm fully aware, is not an easy thing to build. But if you could solve this, oh my gosh, if you could solve this, I tip my hat to you and I will say that this will tremendously lower the complexity of using the app. But right, coming out of that, since I don't like waiting and I have all the tools that I need, I made several attempts to lower the complexity of using Home Assistant automations. My first attempt at this was when I used Notion. Prep all new documents. One new document found. New actions are now available. I was able to connect Notion to Node Red and trigger automations via webhooks to manipulate the content within the Notion document. This went pretty well. A lot of you liked it. The next iteration was connecting Obsidian to Home Assistant through Node Red. I'm gonna prove my point so hard, YouTube may flag this video for abuse. Oh my God. This is what happens when you combine this popular home automation system with this powerful note-taking app. I built five automations that will mollywop your mind, and the fifth automation unlocks superpowers for your smart home. Now, because of Obsidian's simplistic local nature, I was able to get a step further and actually trigger automations right within Obsidian using simple, plain text, and a button press. My wife found this incredibly useful, but your boy have no chill and I wanted to go even further. So I explored having automation store themselves within Obsidian and fire automatically without any buttons. No if statements, no code, no special commands or special keywords. Let me blow your mind. I've read countless forums, blogs, seen a whole bunch of comments. And one of the things that come up repetitively is People want to be able to have their homes suggest automations as well as write automations for them. BBL, but here's the shocking truth. If my wife can create automations by simply writing it down, then that means that my AI smart home agent can create automations on behalf of my home. My home can now write automations for itself. And when you take the concepts that I showed here and combine it with a plugins or add-ons such as like AI automation suggestion, like that's like a home assistant plugin and, and combine it with this concept, you're able to now have your home suggest and write its own automations. This is no longer theory. This is reality. You can do this. And you heard it here first, folks. Each iteration, I learned more about how I could use AI and how it can be used within a smart home setting. And I also learned what made the user experience phenomenal. This led me to updating K and implementing a smart home framework that lets me create new automations really rapidly. I won't rehash all of those details or go into super depth about that here. Um, I posted links in the description to all of those videos that I've mentioned from before if you're interested in seeing those iterations. When Home Assistant released their, quite frankly, best update ever, 2025.4, I realized that someone could actually one-up all of this, right? You could now technically have a conversation, no, even better, you can now create an AI agent 
that could interface with you and create Home Assistant automations by simply talking to users. It can ask you questions and store the automations in Obsidian or as a Home Assistant blueprint or as a script, hint, hint. It can do all of that. I haven't tried it out, but you, it's, it's there. I see the tools, they're there for you to do it. I lied, I did try it out and it was awesome. Hey, can you help me create an automation? Sure, I'd be happy to help. What's the name of the automation you'd like to create? So despite all of these new possibilities, right? I don't think we're completely there yet. Remember the complexity line that I brought up from before? I said that there had to be trade-offs. Depending on the trade-offs, it would answer the question of whether or not this whole entire use case would be worth it for you. Home Assistant is complex with different entities and integrations. And while AI is able to trigger some of those commands, it lacks being able to run the commands with new ones. Here's what I mean. If I said to the AI, turn the thermostat off when no one is at home and turn it back on when I'm 10 minutes away from home. The easiest part of that command would be for it to turn the thermostat on and off. That's, that's easy. The hard part is the nuance around no one is home. Does that mean when all the phones go off the Wi-Fi? If so, then for how long do they need to be off the Wi-Fi before it's considered no one's home? Does it mean that there is no movement on the motion sensors or no presence detected? And then what about 10 minutes away from home? How would it count for traffic? And what if you make a stop to a place that's 10 minutes away from home, right? You can see how tricky this can get. Solving those type of issues are tough and it's gonna vary wildly between you and myself, but there is a middle ground. I showed this middle ground way back when I talked about using AI to control my vacuum robot. Now I'm gonna put that video in context with this example. For those of you unfamiliar with what I'm talking about for that video, I essentially used ChatGPT to control my robot vacuum. It was able to vacuum my entire Entire house and keep a schedule based off of instructions that I gave it and I did not have to create actual if else statements for it to run. AI literally told it when to start and stop everything. So to put that in context with this example, you would give the AI similar instructions like what we discussed earlier, except for each of the parts that required extra nuance, you would provide it data or a function call so it can get the data to make the right decisions. If the AI needed to know if the house was empty, it would call the function that you gave it and that function would return the occupancy state of the home. If it needed to know if you were 10 minutes away, it would call again that function and it would provide your ETA. Both of these functions would be provided by you and would be the codified version of what you mean when you say no one is home or 10 minutes away from home. The automation would run by itself in an infinite loop and govern itself. What I just described was an AI agent, but I understand if all of that sounded very intense and it's actually the answer to the second question. The trade-off is that the automations may be easier to use in the end, but the complexity is gonna come up with the initial setup. If you want your family to use or create a smart home experience that's convenient, easy to use, simple to maintain, you're gonna have to roll up your sleeve and craft it yourself. But the good thing is that once it's created, it gets easier to use and easier to maintain. Additionally, as AI evolves, it requires less and less nuance and is able to do much more with a lot less. And soon it's gonna reach a point where it can do all of it with little to no help from you. Rest assured, I'm sure there's gonna be a subscription model somewhere for all of this. Now, here's some extra good news for you. You don't have to wait. You can build cool AI automations like what I've discussed for yourself right now. There is a lot of cool integrations out there like LLM Vision, Olama, Open AI Conversation, and add-ons like Node-RED that can extend your smart home to the moon. A lot of these automations I showed were created using a combination of Node-RED and Home Assistant. And many of you have asked in the comments and another places how you could do it and you don't want just the automation script you want me to teach you how to fish so you never go hungry and i got you fam i got you if that sounds like you go and check out the automation trilogy which is the first link in the description and don't worry if you don't know how to use node red i teach you how to use that like a pro too so no need to worry. In the automation trilogy, I reveal a lot of the tips and tricks that I use to create dope automations. For example, I have several comments from you stating that you want automations that can summarize calendar events or trigger automations based off of your calendar schedule. In the Home Assistant community, I saw this post. I thought I could use multi-day events in a Google Calendar to set my home automation to certain states like 
home office day, normal work day, vacation at home, vacation away, etc. But it seems impossible to even use a starts with text match as a sensor. Now, this post was created almost like two or three years ago, so I'm sure the changes that Home Assistant team has made probably implemented a few of these features, and perhaps it's easier to do now. I'm not 100% sure what they were trying to do, but, but perhaps it's easier. But what if I showed you how to solve this particular problem and more using the same tricks that I showed you in the Automation Trilogy? Yeah, just watch this video.